Hello, welcome back to Larry Spurries, where we learn about animals, learn how to pronounce your teacher's name, and hopefully don't run away screaming. Because that's right, it's Halloween time. And so we have a special featured animal for, for this week, fitting the holiday. Let's meet him now. <laughs> Kingdom Animalia, Phylum Cordata. Yeah. We're dealing with animals and vertebrates. There's actually a lot more creepy invertebrates, but maybe next year. This time we're doing more traditional vertebrate Halloween animals. In particular, we have class mammalia, because it's Lurie's furries, so we're usually going to focus on furry things. Order Chiroptera, bats. Family Phylostomidae are leaf-nosed bats, as the name suggests. But, but more to the point this time, Subfamily Desmodontini, the vampire bats, of which there are three different species, but the one we're mainly going to focus on, because it's the one that's most relevant to the uh, Halloween comparison, would be Desmodus rotundus, the common vampire bat. <laughs> so, so, sorry to, to let you down on the, on the Halloween theme, but... Vampire bats are not vampires, because vampires do not exist. Moreover, vampire bats really can't have anything to do with the vampire mythology, because vampire mythology originates in Eastern Europe, and the vampire bats are all in the Americas. So the, the map here shows the range of the common vampire bat, Central and South America, the other two of vampire bat species are also American natives. You won't find you won't find them in Europe where you find the vampire stories, and you won't find them around around us either. They're they're all South American. There are another group of bats known as false vampire bats. So these have teeth that sort of look like vampire bats, but they're not blood drinkers. You could find them in Africa and Asia, so at least the vampire story writers might have seen one in their life at times, but still, they certainly wouldn't have seen a bat drinking blood or a bat doing anything else vampire-like. That doesn't happen. At least not with, at least not anywhere other than the Americas. So, vampire bats have nothing to do with the vampire myth. They're completely separate. They, just happens that both, drink, both vampire bats and vampires do drink blood. So let's meet the common vampire bat. It's tiny, three, three and a half inches long, seven inch wingspan, only weighs two ounces, not counting the weight of the blood it drinks, because a, a vampire bat can drink enough blood at a time to significantly increase its weight above that two ounces. Also, if some curiosity, they're not particularly relevant to the, uh, how, to the Halloween theme. Vampire bats are pretty much the only bats that can run around on the ground. Most bats uh, pretty much lost their ability for ground locomotion when their forelimbs evolved into wings, but vampire bats can actually scoot around running on, the, on their wings as if they were legs. It's kind of cool, but not creepy enough. So let's go into the more Halloweenish details, shall we? The important thing, of course, was vampire bats drinking blood. And they do, yes. Common vampire bats mainly feed from horses and cattle. The other two vampire bat species don't even do anything that interesting. They mostly drink blood from birds. So, so there is no vampire bat that's going to typically attack humans. Also mentioned horses and cattle. Those are, of course, not native to the Americas. They came with the European settlers. And so before, before the Europeans arrived with horses and cattle, vampire bats would have been drinking uh, blood from the, lo the large mammals that were around. Uh, ta tapers, uh, mostly. Maybe, maybe llamas. Since, since the arrival of uh, horses and cattle, the vampire bats almost exclusively prefer those two in, the, in that order. And, and so they, they're a species that's adapted amazingly well to, to, inva to invasive uh, species coming into their environment. 
So you notice the skull of the vampire bat. There's the tooth structured in particular. That does look rather vampire-like, the long, sharp fangs. And the sharp teeth are used to make deep wounds in the flesh of the animal. And of course, horses and cattle are big animal targets. And so the blood, and then the, the uh, bat laps up blood using its tongue. The bat does, a bat does not suck blood through its teeth the way a mythological vampire does. That's impossible. The bat saliva contains some anticoagulant substances to keep the blood flowing. But even with the presence of those, the vampire bats are not a huge danger to the creatures they feed on. Because, because a bat is only two, remember it only weighs two ounces. So even though it can drink more than its weight in blood, it still can't drink that much. And, it, and likewise, the anticoagulants are fairly potent for what they are, but they just don't deliver that much of them. The, you know, even after the bat stops feeding, the horse or cow will not lose enough blood to kill it. So, vamp so vampire bats, they are nocturnal, they do suck blood, they, they look like bats, they, they have the appearance, because they are bats, of course, they have the appearance of the vampire story, but that's about it. They're not. They're just ordinary animals going about their, their lives in a fascinating and unique manner. But... No, nothing supernatural about them. They're just bats. So sorry to sorry to let down the spooky Halloween story on a on a dull, dull note like that. But this is science class. We have to stick to what's real. So with that, our sources mostly Wikipedia in this case. Uh, Im images from se from uh, several sources, basically posted from Wikipedia. But where all Creative Commons and so free for reuse, and that's that. And this, so enough for this week's Halloween animal, the vampire bat. Next week, since it's it'll be just after Halloween, we'll return with one more Halloween feature, which is going to be very cool, or at least to start. And I'm afraid it'll probably be just as much of a letdown because. Uh, there's nothing in the real world which does the kind of creepy stuff that Halloween myths do. So I did disappoint you about that, but have a great week anyway. Enjoy your Halloween. Make sure to do it safely. Goodbye.